Welcome to the Empower Hour with Greater Nashville Mental Health. The Empower Hour will provide information and support about mental health, substance use, and behavioral health. Our goal is to share inspiring stories about transforming lives, to strike down stigma, and to encourage our community to reach out and get help when needed. Mental health is part of all of our lives. It's time we talk about it. I'm Dr. Cynthia Whitaker, President and CEO of Greater Nashville Mental Health, and it's time to get empowered. Hello, and welcome to the Empower Hour with Greater Nashua Mental Health. I'm Dr. Cynthia Whitaker, and I have the privilege of being the President and CEO at Greater Nashua Mental Health. We welcome you to our show, where we like to interview people from both our mental health center, as well as our community partners, to just bring empowerment and more information to our community. Today is a little bit of an experiment, and it's the first time I'll have two guests on the show together. And they are here to talk with me today about the awesome work that happens in our community and the amazing collaboration with Gate City Bike Co-op. So thank you for joining me, gentlemen, and being part of my experiment of having two guests yeah, together. To and I'd, I'd love to just start with you introducing yourselves and the organization you're from, however that makes sense for you both. John has to go first. <laughs> I'm John Burke. Uh, I actually started the organization in a friend's basement about 12 years ago. And what we started at that point was taking some bicycles that uh, people didn't want, and we'd fix them up and work with the soup kitchen and give them away. And since that time, I've met Don, and we've moved into different headquarters, different headquarters, and things have moved since then. And I'll leave it to you, Don. <laughs> I met John because I'm cheap. Uh, he had a small ad in the paper that said, "We'll repair bikes for free between the hours of something like uh, one and three o'clock in front of the library." And I said, "This is about seven or eight years ago." And I said, I like that, free, and I'm not a mechanic. So I brought both bikes over, and when I brought them over to, to him, they were just about ready to close. And they had about three, maybe four volunteers with them. And, um, and I noticed that the people that were there could hardly afford hmm. to have bike repairs. And, and uh, I could. Hmm. So... Uh, I said to John, when they were done tuning them up, I said, how, how much could I give you? And he said, no, no, we don't take any money. Because all of their clients were very poor. Yeah. And uh, so I said, well, what happens if you need a cable, or you need a brake pad, or you need this? He said, well, I take them out of my you know, supplies. And I said, well, who pays for the supplies? He says, I do. I said, well, you're not going to last in business too long. <laughs> so, but then about, uh, well, within three or four days, I found two bikes on the side of the road near my house. And I put them in my truck. Then a, a day or two later, I found another two bikes. Mm. I said, well, maybe this is a Norman. This is meant know, to be providential. Yeah. yeah, who knows? So I call him up. I said, hey, you want some bikes? He said, sure, I could always use them. He said, I don't have much place to put them, but bring them over to my house. So I brought him over to Hudson, and he was right. He didn't have, he couldn't have put in a, a one-wheeler in, in, in his garage. So um, his problem was, I need some place to work. Hmm. And um, so I talked to Father Kerper at St. Patrick's. St. Patrick's, yeah. And he had the old school next to the, church that hadn't been used in 30 years. And I said, can we use one of the rooms? One of the rooms. He said, sure. So we took over one of the rooms. And um, we thought we were going to last just a couple of months. Uh, but it went on and on and hmm. on and on. And the, the nice part about the school was that it was free, and but it had no heat. <laughs> and had no water, and if it was 30 degrees outside, it was 30, 30 degrees, degrees inside. Outside. And if it was 85 degrees <laughs> outside, it was pretty hot. It, it was 110. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, but uh, it didn't bother John. It didn't bother the bikes. The bikes <clears> didn't <throat> mind. But uh, poor John was working in that stuff. Mm. 
Uh, so then within a few months, we took over a second room. And then a few months later, we took over a third. <laughs> These are big rooms. Yeah. So the, the clientele, uh, word got around quick. And it was, I have to thank Bob Mack mm. from the welfare department. I have admired him so much. But, yeah. and that was seven or eight years ago. And I, I went to one of the meetings, the monthly meetings um, for the continuum of care. I had been representing the St. Vincent de Paul. But I mentioned to Bob at one of the meetings, we're going to start a bike repair and giveaway. So it was a small snowball, and it just mm -hmm. continued and continued. So the, the people of Nashua are very generous, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to, I don't need this. It's about time this goes. So they donate the bikes. Some of them donate monies. And uh, it, that's how it started. Yeah, I think it snowballed because yeah, it filled a, a need, okay. right? Right. If if yeah. there wasn't a need for it, it, you'd still be in one room fixing right. a couple bikes here or there for some folks. But that, that's right. And when you use the word empowerment, I think it was about probably about three months into the program, uh, John and I were, uh, and I was probably cleaning something because they won't let me work on no, any of the bikes. No I'm not mechanically inclined. <laughs> and my, and, and uh, yeah, uh, John was there fixing a bike, and so we were talking, and I, and I said, you know, John, I said, we were thinking about you know, keeping the bikes out of the landfill. We're giving them to people who can't even a car, even if you gave them one, they couldn't afford it uh, to maintain it. And I said, you know, we're not just giving away an object, we're giving people hope. Yeah, opportunity. Yeah, and there's a, there's a tie between hope and empowerment. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and John immediately, he was thinking the same thing. Yeah. It was like a light bulb went on. And, uh, and that's, that's what it is. And we're, I'm blessed to be part of it. Yeah. yeah. So we, we were chatting a little bit before, earlier, yes. about how Bikes are a mode of transportation, and sometimes people forget that because many people use it only for enjoyment because we have cars for transportation. Okay. So, so bikes aren't just a toy. They right. can be. You know, for, for kids, it's a great way to, to get exercise and get out. When I was a kid, it was how I got to school. Right. Uh, but it's more than that. It, it is transportation. And if you look in various parts of the, the world, it, that's a basic of transportation, not so much in New Hampshire and, and not so much in Nashua, but there's a there's a growing bike community, mm -hmm. and I think we're contributing to that, to where you need infrastructure and you need to have uh, safe ways of people using the traffic uh, and using the roads in town. So yes, mm. it's it's more than a toy. Mm. It can it can be in a, as Don says empowerment. How do you get from from where you're staying to get to work. Right. Can you get to a doctor's office? Can you get to a grocery store? How do you get the basic things done that, that people need to get done? The public transportation is a wonderful option and we certainly support them a, a lot, but they don't go everywhere and they don't necessarily go when you want. Right. So if you have needs beyond what the routes go, what do you do? You can walk in town or another choice is to, to bicycle. And that's one of the things we empower people to do that can't afford to get their own bicycle. We take what the community has decided they don't want anymore and give them to us, fix them up, and then we give them to them and empower them to, to go out in the community to get their job, to, to be contribute to the community. Mm. Mm. One, one of the things, um, that you've both shared with me and kind of from preparation for this is the difference between how far somebody can go if they walk Absolutely. versus how far somebody could go if they have a bike, mm -hmm. right? And so the, the radius of empowerment for a job or a doctor's visit or something really changes. So well, if you think about your basic math, when you go back to high school, um, pi r squared, you know, what's the area of a circle? So how far can you go in an hour if you're walking? Well, uh, uh, 20, a 20 minute mile isn't a terrible pace. That's probably you know pretty average. So that's three miles in an hour. 
Well, if you do that and you do the math, that means you're going to be able to get to somewhere in a circle that's about 10 square miles. But if, you put, if I put you on a bike, chances are you can go 10 miles in, in that same hour. All of a sudden, that area that you can reach goes from 10 square miles to 90 square miles. Yeah, exponentially increases. Exponentially increases, yeah. which means that uh, the job that was just out of your reach, just because it was going to take you two hours to get there, now all of a sudden it's going to take you 45 minutes. Mm. And we've had some excellent examples of that. I can give you one. I'd love one. Uh, when we were still at the school, it was, it was during the, the height of the pandemic. I was working there alone. And I got a phone call from this woman saying, my husband really needs a bike. He's got a chance at a, at a job, but it's going to take him more than an hour to walk there. And I was working on a very nice bike that had been donated to us. And I said, well, yeah, what about this one? And I ended up taking the bike over to their house. Uh, and there was, a, uh, there was a vehicle in the driveway, but they said you know, they couldn't afford to get it fixed. Uh, they'd both been out of work for a while. Then uh, I gave them the bike. And about a day and a half later, I got another message from this woman saying, my husband has not quit smiling hmm. since mm. you gave him the bike. He's gotten mm. the job. It's going to allow us to, to get some bills paid. And finally, we might be able to get the truck paid off or get at least enough to, so we can repair it. And so it was just going to be cascading. This, this led, led to one thing. He was going to have to turn down the job and have to look for something closer. And, and it, they decided that, yes, this is something he could do. And instead of taking him more than an hour, it's going to take him less than half an hour. Hmm. And it, it was empowering, I think. Yeah. Well, and then led to other positive things for, for their family, for their couple. Oh, absolutely. For, right? So then when you get a job, then you can fix the transportation. Now you can have multiple options for how to get there exactly. or, you know, other opportunities that mm -hmm. without that one, maybe they would have had to take a job that's closer but didn't pay as well and then maybe exactly. not be able to afford to fix the truck. So just, right. it's so empowering, right? So empowering. If, if we're going to use that word a lot. Yeah, I, I love well, it. It's great. The, Hope and empowerment. The, the empowerment is not only for our clientele, it's for the volunteers. Yeah, It yeah. empowers the volunteers in a very, uh, I since I don't work on the bikes, I observe what John is doing mm. and how he's doing it. And for example, uh, if we have uh, 10 people that are scheduled to come in for a bike, we're open to the public on Mondays from 3 to 7. So John will set up appointments with them. So 10 of them are coming. Well, guess what he does? He has at least 22 bikes that are mm. ready to be chosen. So it's not a case of person comes in, here's the bike. Yeah, you know, I love that. You want to empower that person, give them a choice. Yes. So for every person that comes in, we've got at least two bikes that they can choose from. Hmm. I'll take this one or this one. The 40 odd, some odd volunteers we have, they're not all there at one time, but they're all bike enthusiasts and they know their bikes. They know how to properly size the person to the bike and help them, not tell them to, but help them choose between one bike and, and others that are there. And some of the stories can be funny. Mm. Oh, so this, <laughs> this lady came in with a boyfriend and she loved this pink bike with the streamers and the basket with a little flower in the front. I love it, I love it. And her boyfriend saying, I don't know, I, it, it, I'm not sure. Oh, this is what I want. So, and we always have them try. We didn't have her try it. Hmm. This is what I want. Because she's so, yeah. She, she would love it. So she signed for it. And we were at St. Patrick's at the time. So she rode off, turned around the corner on the bike. Then we could hear her screaming, where are the brakes? Where are the brakes? There are no brakes. With no handbrake. It was a coaster bike. Oh, the old-fashioned so bike. Mm -hmm. And her boyfriend had to run her down to stop her, to stop <laughs> the bike. So she came back and she ended up choosing the choosing right bike. Choosing a different bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she wanted the pink one. Yeah, yeah. So. But, I, but I, I love what you're saying, right? Like it's, because I do think that there's a lot of, 
charity or social services that are very one size fits all. Right. Like, here's right. your box of food for yeah. this week. This is what yeah. we have. Um, and more and more people are realizing that's that's not really a dignified way to give help right. and support. That right. having some level of choice, um, you know, really saying, well, how, how do I need this bike? How am I going to use it? And then who am I as a person, right? So makes size, a difference. That size, yeah. what experience do they have? Yep. Yeah. So a number of our clients have not been on a bike in years, maybe maybe decades. Mm -hmm. uh, they've reached a point in their life where <clears throat> now all of a sudden they need the alternative transportation. A car's not available to them or for whatever reason they may not have a license. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> they're stuck thinking back, well, you know, 20 years ago, I had a bike and I thought that was pretty neat. <laughs> Things have changed since though. The uh, technology has improved. Yeah. And so what they thought was pretty neat 20 or 30 years ago, maybe there's something better out there now. Mm. And so we try and talk them through that. Mm. Exactly what you were saying. How are you going to use this thing? If you're, if you're going to be going through Mines Falls on your commute, you might want something different than if it's, than if it's going to be all on roads. Right. Or if you're, if you're thinking, I'm going to go, you know, my commute's going to be nine or ten miles as opposed to two or three miles. We might want to consider pushing you in one direction or another. You always make, want to make sure that they have that choice, though. Right. Uh, but we try to fit them. We want to make sure that it's not too small, not too big. Something. The problem is, is you know, the, the ten minutes they spend with us, and it seems like this is what they really want. A week later, they may sit there and go, you yeah, know, this is this just doesn't fit. So we try and we try to eliminate that or avoid that if we can and spend some time with them and give right. them a choice. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and they still have the choice. You, you, uh, I observed John doing and saying things. One of the things that he almost always says is to the client, uh, you're all set. By the way, the, the bike's not new, but we offer them a new helmet we offer them uh, a new lock yep. and new strobe lights because many of them work on the second shift and some on the third shift. And so they need to be seen. Right, need to have a light. So these yep. strobe lights are important. And thank goodness for some of the local businesses that help us along, that support mm -hmm. us. So these things are given to them. Um, and, and it, um, I don't know. <laughs> it empowers them again. They mm -hmm. they feel safe mm -hmm. in getting the bike. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. glad you mentioned that. Um, it's not just a bike because so I did in preparation for this reach out to the staff at Greater mm -hmm. Nashville Mental Health for hey tell us some success right. stories about how our clients have utilized uh, the co-op, and that was one of the things I heard consistently was that it wasn't just a bike, but it was everything that was needed to use it safely and wisely, that the, they didn't have to then try to find a lock because they were afraid mm -hmm. it was gonna get stolen or things like that. Right. So I, I appreciate that. And then you mentioned the collaboration with other folks. Is there like specific collaborations there's that a, you have? There's a few of them. Uh, I'd say one of the first one is gonna be uh, Goodales, yeah. the Trek bike store. Uh, they've been working with us since we first started. They've yeah. been good about helping us uh, get supplies and getting parts and things like that. Uh, lately, mm -hmm. they've been they've been a great place to give us bicycles. So they get used bicycles and the people want to donate and they say, okay, we can do can drop them off here, and we'll get them to the to the bike co-op. Uh, parts they may take parts off a bike that they're fixing that the owner doesn't want, which mean in many cases it would it would be tossed. Hmm. Well, we can use those in a lot of cases. Yeah, we need everything we get, we, we scramble for. We, <laughs> we take bikes in that, that really can't be fixed, but there are parts on them that can be used. Mm -hmm. So we'll take those parts off. We'll reuse tires, we'll reuse tubes, uh, shifters. We'll just almost anything mm -hmm. that we can, we'll try and strip off there and use it. And they do the same thing when they're fixing bikes, but they generally have better bikes than <laughs> they're working on than we do. Right. So we get some very good parts out of them and some very good, some very good bikes. And that's what? where his engineering background comes in. Uh, his engineering background is unique. Do you want to explain what it was? I suppose I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on the spot. 
I, <laughs> I retired from Hewlett Packard, where mm -hmm. I was an environmental engineer, which means, what was an environmental engineer doing a computer company? You want to think about what happens when you build the computer that you use materials that can eventually be recycled, uh, which means how do you build it so it can be taken apart? As mm. part of that, I <clears throat> you begin to understand materials a little more. And uh, so when I retired, this is one of the things I wanted to do was learn how to fix my bike. So mm -hmm. I did. I went, I went to one of the two schools in the country to, to become a certified bike technician. And, uh, and I am. Mm. So <laughs> then I used that to, and to realize that I, I don't really want to work in a bike shop, but I'd, I'd like to work on bikes. And I'll never own enough bikes to, to work on as many as I want. So with, I st we started working with the soup kitchen. Mm. Uh, I'd fix up a few bikes that I would, would be donated to me, give them to the soup kitchen, and they would donate them to their clients. And then it grew into this. Right. And so now, in order for somebody to come to you to get a yeah. bike, there's a voucher program, right? We work with mm. the local, the local uh, social agencies, such as Greater National Mental Health, uh, the soup kitchen, uh, Harbor Care, Almost any school, almost any church, adult learning center, uh, front door agency, uh, stepping stones. Um, what we ask is that the agency know the person that, that they're, they're giving the voucher for. When we first started, if you showed up the door, we'd give you a bike. <laughs> and that fell apart pretty quickly. It was mm -hmm. abused. We'd see the same person coming back two or three weeks in a row, and you go, well, what happened to the bike we gave you last week? Uh, my cousin needed a bike. Well, why didn't your cousin come in? Well, he liked that one. And I told him I could just get another one. You guys give him away for free. Uh, we, we have to work with something better. And thank goodness the, um, the local agencies have, have mm -hmm. been very good to, to work with. What well, great yeah. collaboration. And yeah. in that way, they can they can recommend somebody and say, yes, this person, we know them, they're in, and they would be a good candidate for a bike. We have right. no way to vet people. Right. And, that, and the, the agencies such as Greater National Mental Health, you know your clients and what their needs are and stuff. And what's great, one of the great things about Greater National Mental Health is many of your, your counselors come with their clients, mm -hmm. right? which is, is unusual. And it's greatly appreciated mm. that we get to know a little more about the programs that you guys have. And I think it's it, then some of the news about what we do comes back to your organization. So I think it just strengthens things going both directions. Right. I was telling Michelle from, the, uh, from your office that on one occasion, uh, one of the young case managers, no more than 32, right? Uh, came with a, a client who was probably 55 or more and obviously unemployable, if you will. And um, he was trying to pick out, a, he, he liked a certain bike and <laughs> the, the volunteer, our volunteers, well, I think this one's better for you. That one's too big or something to that effect. And um, so finally he said, okay, I'll take this one. And then it came to uh, getting a helmet, mm -hmm. okay? Well, mandatory, if it's mandatory if you're 16 and under, you have to get a helmet or you won't get a bike. Well, he's 55 or more. And he's like, I don't want to wear a helmet. And she's saying, but you have to wear a helmet. I don't want to wear a helmet. Mm -hmm. And she's had, finally she had to put her foot down. You don't get a helmet, you don't get a bike. Mm -hmm. He's oh, all right. <laughs> so he took the helmet, put it on. Then he rode off into the sunset on his bicycle, <laughs> and she had her sunglasses on, and I knew it. And I said, in a little tease, I said, are you crying? She said, of course I am. Yeah. She said, that's my, my young son, who's twice my age, being more independent. Yeah. yeah. Well, and those are exactly the stories that I heard when I asked the staff you know, what are some of the success stories was just the independence and how how empowering it was for people to not have to rely on others to yeah. have a, you know, transportation to a doctor's visit. Yeah. 
right. or to be able to come to the office to see their counselor right, mm-hmm. on their yeah. own rather than rely on somebody else or to be able to say, I can come at any time rather than, well, if you put my appointment at three in the afternoon, I'm going to have to sit in the waiting room for two hours because of when the bus comes, right? Mm-hmm. And so lot, lots of, but one in particular that really struck out to me was we have a program called Renew, which is where uh, we have a, a counselor that works with kids in the high schools. Mm. And it's really about transitioning that challenging time, right? Transitioning mm. from um, high school to adulthood where many of our, um, our youth, unfortunately, don't have role models or support mm. in their lives to help them. And um, this particular counselor has helped like five different people in her program get bikes from okay. your co-op. Um, but one in particular was walking from North to Main Street every single day to get wow. to appointments, to, uh, and that's a long walk. Yeah. Um, and so to get to the bike from you all just really gave this person more time, mm-hmm. more freedom, um, just to be more involved and integrated in the community. And, and I know you, you were saying that you don't always get to hear the success we stories. Right. We don't, we, uh, they, cas- they occasionally mm-hmm. come back. Yeah. Um, if I can think of a couple that have been good, we, when we were still at the school downtown, um, this, this one gentleman came in one day with, the, with a bike. He says, I got this from you guys about six months ago. And I got a job, and I'm making some money, and I bought a better bike. You guys can have this one back, and I think give it to somebody else. And we did. Yeah. And and that's one of the things we actually tell our clients, or we try to remember to our clients as they're leaving, going, we, we're happy to have you have the bike, but you reach a position you don't need anymore. Mm-hmm. Pass it on to somebody else who does need it, or bring it back here, and we'll pass it on. Yeah. Uh, it'll keep it off the streets and out of out of the Nashua River, and yeah. and we get it back. And if we can't use it, we'll use some of the parts. Yeah, what, one of my other stories that I heard was from our our drug court participants, mm. right? So we we're the providers for uh, folks that are enrolled in okay. in our local drug court. And so a person coming out of incarceration, no family support in the area, but required to come to us for treatment. No way to get there except the bus, which we've already talked about the pros and cons, and gets a bike from you, uses it to come to appointments with us, uses it to go to appointment, prenatal appointments with his girlfriend, right? Then uses it eventually to get a job. Then, because he has a job, he's able to get a car, yeah. and he donates the bike back yeah, to you yeah, all right. for we another don't, participant. We don't hear about these things. Yeah. But uh, of late, within I would say of late, within the past two years, we've been getting people who have lost their license because they've made a mistake yeah. or two or three, and they've they uh, are now in a program. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that they can get back on their feet. And they, yeah. you can't recognize them as an individual that's in that pickle. Yeah. They, they speak normal, they're great, they're intelligent, the and, they're, and they're in to get a, a good bike, and they know their quality. Mm-hmm. So quite often they'll say something like, you know, if I didn't have this bike, I'd be driving a car without a license, right. and I'd get into worse trouble. Right. So it means a lot to them, right. a great deal to them. Right, because it can cascade, right, in that negative. Yeah. Yes. Deci- but, but at the same time, if you don't have a job because you can't get there, then right. that too could lead to maybe not the right recovery we want. Right. And I, I mean, so I, I so appreciate that that is a, a group that you give bikes too but i also know that there might be some stigma around that right that people assume well, if you're riding a bike oh you must have lost your license but that's right. clearly not true either no no john uh he used to ride his bicycle from hudson to nashville about 10 miles yeah it was about 18 to 20 miles round trip mm. on, a, on, a, on a daily basis essentially uh and um I would ride mine around 
the community. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> but there are many. We have, out of the 40 volunteers, 10 of them are women. One particular woman in particular, I think she rides her bike every day. Mm. Yes. And um, she's safety conscious, wears a helmet, and wears the appropriate garb. Um, even in the wintertime, she'll be riding her nice. bike. Going to work on Amherst Street, she's a, uh, an instructor at the university. Hmm. So uh, she's, um, how, how would I, what was I going to say about her? Uh, Just that clearly is not somebody in that situation, right? right and so, but right. people often make that assumption. Yeah, I yeah. know, but I, when I wrote yeah. a lot when I was. 10 years ago, I wrote considerably more than I do now, and there was an assumption, oh, you must have a DWI or something yeah. like that. And yeah. you go, no, I've got a car at home that I could be using. Uh, number one, I'm getting exercise. It's it's good from just for my soul just to be out there. Mm -hmm. It's lovely going for a bike ride. Yeah. It wakes you up in the morning. It's just it's good it's for the environment, less yeah. gas. It's, it's less wear and tear in my car, right? so I get more out of that. Um, yeah, it's just it for for a number of different reasons. Yeah. It's I enjoy yeah. riding my bike. It's yeah. just fun. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. It's like you said. It's like so normal in yeah. other countries and yeah. other cultures, but here it's like oh, there must be some reason why you would choose to do that. Oh, yeah. Other than well, I'm a bike enthusiast. Well, I enjoy riding my bike. It's yeah. safe. It's nice. It's well. The other thing is too is I I tend not to wear a lot of lycra, which you see people who are mm -hmm. doing it for sport. Right. Right. Will be all. I'll kit it out so we have the full. Well, I, th this is what I would ride a bike in. I'm, I'm wearing jeans and a shirt, maybe a sweatshirt. Right. I do put on reflective clothing because right. I want to be seen. But it's it's possible to to be out there having fun, being productive <laughs> in just street clothes. You don't have to. You don't have to wear right. the whole garb to do it. Right. Right. And. Uh, and just and that's that's no way of being recognized that, that these are just everyday people. You wear you ride what you're wearing. Right. It's it's just another form of transportation. Exactly. Right. One of the things we say a lot in in our agency, right, is there's multiple paths to recovery, right? That mm -hmm. some people might choose medication, other people mm -hmm. only therapy, right? Whatever it might be, there's multiple paths. Like, we're human beings. There's multiple paths to transportation. There's mm -hmm. multiple paths to, and it doesn't mean anything if you choose one over the other, other than it fits right. for you at this right. season of your yeah. life. Yeah, early on, there were three women that came to us, and they each had a voucher. They were living at Mary's house. Uh huh. And um, they, they didn't know each other. They just happened to meet. I forgot where they got their vouchers or if they got them from the same place. But they showed up together, and so they chose a bike of the choosing and helmet, locks. I don't think we had lights at the time. Um, and so they started talking to each other. Do you have a pump, a tire pump? I have a tire pump. Oh, okay. Do you have a wrench? Well, I have a wrench. Mm. So they were going to get together. Their own little community. Yeah, uh, and they rode off into the sunset together. becoming friends. Because mm. you can't, it's like, Owning a truck, I don't own anymore. But it's like owning a truck. You have a lot of friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly. I don't have a truck anymore. I lost all my truck. friends. <laughs> we miss your truck. <laughs> well, but, but that's another great story, right? So, like, and again, a lot of the stories I heard were people reintegrating into the community through and their bikes. As a or, group. Right, as a group, right? Creating connections mm -hmm. with people or jobs or places mm -hmm. that are a little further away because now they can travel a little further, right? right? So it, 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 you just really can't put um, a, a definition to the positive outcomes that can ripple out of the work that you all do. Yeah, it, it, it's a good outcome for our volunteers as well, which is yeah. why I'm happy you've got some stories here because... Oftentimes, uh, if they're there on Mondays when we're handing out bikes, they may or may not be involved with the clients. I know for a long mm. time, I fixed bikes in the basement. I gave them to the soup kitchen. I never saw a client. It was very sterile, and you mm. had no idea. 
it's a very different thing to deal with these people. This is this is a real person here. Mm. This is the invisible people in town. Mm. To see the tears in their eyes with the gratitude, it's, right? Is, and so it's a real. So talking to one of our volunteers recently, he loves working on bikes. He came. He worked for a bike shop. But then before he moved here, he, he's one of my go-to guys because he knows a lot of stuff that I don't. Um, <clears throat> and he's, he was talking about this, this, this one client came back in and they, and they were gushing about the bike they got. And they, they got the job and they got the apartment and they were, on, you know, they were, they were on their way to do something. This was, this was the ignition point for them. And he goes, I hadn't realized that. Mm. He goes... I, I enjoy doing this, but does it count doing good if it's something you enjoy? Or yes, yes, it does. Yes, it That's does. That's why we're here, is because we're enjoying doing this. This is why I do this, is because I get a kick out of fixing bikes, and plus I get to do something to help somebody else, mm. and maybe do some good in the community. Mm. Right, and that's where, it, as I started at the beginning, that it empowers not only the clientele, but the people who are volunteers. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets paid, mm -hmm. nobody. Um, unless, I don't I, know, I don't know. I've doubled your salary the last, last couple of times. <laughs> so, from zero to double from, zero. <laughs> so so it, it empowers them because John is addicted to fixing bikes. He's, <laughs> it's an addiction with him. So I guess it's a good addiction. Addictions aren't all bad. Uh, and some of the other, they're all bike enthusiasts. Yeah. So many of them ride bikes. Uh, as a sport, and they'll go on 20, 25 mile hmm. trails. Uh, going back to Goodales a little bit, the very first week we started, uh, we went to Goodales, and the owner said, uh, we said, we're not in competition with you. And they, when they looked at us, within two minutes, he said, there's no way you can compete with us. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll help you out as much as we can within reason, and they have been. They've been mm. absolutely terrific. Yeah. So every, almost every uh, today, uh, every Friday, I'll bring some bagels over there. Mm. So it's like mm. walking into Cheers. And you get the you know, bagels from? I, I get the bagels from <laughs> Bagel Alley. So I, <laughs> I, I didn't bring any, but they they give us some of their bagels mm. when and they close. They haven't sold them. So we share them with the clients and the, uh, the volunteers mm -hmm. and some other people as well. I, I, I love it that it's not only an example, like we've talked about some of Greater Nashville Mental Health values, like mm -hmm. we have a value of collaboration, mm -hmm. we have clearly a value about empowering, but I'm also a firm believer in, to believe in an abundant mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. there's a, so much in this world and to think, oh, you and I have to compete at every moment. But abundance requires a cycle of giving and receiving. And that is exactly what He's, you are doing. Uh, you are giving, <laughs> but you're also receiving from the community in order to give more. And even right. things like the um, National House of Pizza. We get two, two pies every, every Monday that every we Monday. share with our clients yeah. and with our, with, with our volunteers. Well, I mean, ha what a beautiful example of yeah. just the giving and receiving and that, gets that started this community because is doing. A, a guy that they wanted to hire couldn't yeah. take the job. It was he too far away. Provided a bike. And he got a bike. Mm -hmm. So, and I was buying a pizza the first few months on every Monday. And she said, you buy pizza every month? I said, yeah. And she said, are you with the bike people at St. Pat's? I said, yeah. And she said, you're not buying them anymore. Mm hmm. Hmm. Never since then, we pick up two pieces every Monday and we share them. With the clients with the coming client to pick out bikes right. on Monday yeah. during your yeah. open hours. Yeah, and that's all we ask for, just two, mm. no, nothing, just two plain pieces, yeah. which is more than enough. So mm. we're, we're well, I mean, that. just what a delight it is for yeah. me to highlight your organization because you have been in many ways a silent partner of Greater Nashville Mental Health and others throughout mm -hmm. our community for a number of years. And so it's it's just a delight to, to highlight what you're doing. So do you have yeah. some things that would be good for people to know about that Absolutely. would be helpful about how they can help you yes. back or? So we can, we can use help from the community in a number of ways. Uh, volunteers is a big way. Mm. Um, we have, we have mechanics, we can always use more. If you would like to learn, we'll try and train you. 
We can also use any kind of talent it takes to run an organization. Mm -hmm. So websites and being on social media. We need help accounting. We need help when it comes to how do we deal with our finance. Uh, so whatever it takes to run an organization, we can do that. We can use that help. So if there's, a, if you think, well, gee, you know, I I know about websites and I can help design them and that kind of stuff. We can we can use that kind of help. Hmm. Administration, all that stuff. I I would far rather work on a bike than do the admin <laughs> stuff. So yeah. if there's anybody out there that would would like to do that, we. We do not buy the bicycles. Every bicycle we've ever gotten in or given away has been donated from the community. So if, if sitting in somebody's garage or underneath their porch or in a shed, there's a bike that you haven't used for a while, we would be interested in it. I will tell you that our clients far and away prefer uh, mountain bikes or hybrids. They don't want the racing bikes, the ones with the with the drop handlebars. Uh, they want bikes that they can use year round because transportation and getting getting back to alternative, alternative transportation, they need something that, that will last all year. Mm. And so a, a hybrid bike or a mountain bike is the best choice. Right. If you've got a wonderful 10 speed bike that you or your <laughs> parents or your grandparents bought sometime <laughs> back in the 70s or the 60s. I'm sure it was a wonderful bike then. Yeah. Time has not improved it. <laughs> and our clients don't want it. And it, it would be best if, if you found another option right. for it. We, John and I would have, we don't agree on everything. You know? <laughs> and I say, John, those bikes in that other room, when we took over a third room, filled with 10 speed, 45, 50 year old bikes that still had stickers with a license number when you used to have to license your bike for 50 cents or a dollar. And, and he said, Don, it's a piece of junk. And he said, uh, he said, they don't use them. They're not good bikes for the, for for the, the purpose. area. For, oh, right. You're slipping yeah. on sand. Yeah. No good. And so after about two years, it was filled. The room was full. Mm. And Time it just for so recycling. Happens, it just so happens that I met somebody who was sending some bikes to Kenya. Oh, and I said, how long have you been collecting bikes? Oh, three years. How many you got? A 12. I said, how would you like to have 75? <laughs> so they came. And these bikes, these just to be sure, these bikes were repairable. They yeah, yeah. And yeah. reusable. We, right. we were not sending junk. <laughs> no. To a right. Third you were world using country. them. Right. You were. You, right. But they're just things that here people aren't using. Yeah, they they were, not. The reason we we're there is because we didn't know what to do with them. Right. Yeah. And right. I, I loathe tossing them out or recycling them. We, we've certainly done that in the past, but it's better if we can get them used. Yeah. yeah. So Kenya was one place we sent them to. Haiti was another one. Recently, we've been selling them, sending them to Mali, M A L I, not Maui, yeah. Mali, uh, in Africa. <laughs> and uh, again, it's just, this is bikes that come in. They might be excess, or just we have too many. We're constantly on the edge of having too many bikes or too no, few. No, no, right? Yeah. And it, five bikes either way. We can go. We can go that way. Yeah. Um, so we'll send out. These bikes that we our clients don't want, but they're fixable. Mm -hmm. Or ones if we have really a lot of excess, we'll do that. Yeah. But again, you're you're continuing that cycle of giving and receiving. That's right? it. It's like yeah, it's like the uh, the Jordan River uh, is fresh because mm -hmm. every drop that comes in, goes a out. drop goes out. When you get to the Dead Sea, it takes every drop and it doesn't give any away, right. and it's dead. Right. Fish won't live in it. And John is a good example. I mean, as an environmental engineer, that's his, not all of the bikes that we get are terrific. So some of them, they're not repairable. Mm -hmm. uh, so we strip them and Use parts keep again. what yeah. is usable. Yeah. And then you have the other group that is repairable and they make great voucher bikes. Then you have a third group where people will donate a bike that, oh my goodness, this bike is worth a lot. And even our clients don't want them because they're worth a lot. Right. They're the ones that get targeted if they're going to be stolen. Right, yeah. right. So we end up 
selling them. So we're having a we have a sale every year. Okay. When, so when's your sale? Is it soon and next month? Yeah, it's the the twenty seventh of April. Awesome. So that's so that's the twenty seventh of April, uh, starting at nine until you sell out Airport Road. Yeah. Nice. So we're located on Airport Road. I, um, I assume that's on your website. It will be yeah. shortly. It will yeah. be shortly. All right, great. <laughs> he, was, he just decided this yesterday. Yeah. So. Oh, well, perfect. So this is fresh. Fresh, fresh off the press. Yeah, we did this for you. We just, yeah, uh, well, I appreciate <laughs> that. And we have a tradition. We've been doing this since 2017, <laughs> doing the bike sales. That's our first thing we do is sell yeah. some bikes. Um, that we traditionally sell out in about an hour and a half. Wow, wow. And during... During the pandemic, it was because you couldn't buy, buy one. Bike. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be true. Still, we're yeah. we're hoping that that the want and the and the, yeah. the need is out there in the community, because some of these bikes are very nice, mm. and uh, we'd love to see them get a second life and go out there in the community and just have. And then you can know, use the funds to has, buy parts and, that helps and other fund things. Us for the yeah, year. We, right. You know, we <laughs> we are not yes. big on fundraising. Yeah. We depend on donations of, of money, and we depend on donations of uh, volunteers and bicycles. And so okay. this is this is the biggest fundraiser we have all year. Mm, how sweet. Is there anything else that we haven't chatted about that you want to make sure people know about what you do? Well, because of the excess, uh, we haven't. We still give the bikes out to places like Haiti and them. No, no, we've only done that three times. But now we give... we. About a little over a year ago, we helped Conway, Claremont, Plymouth, and Keene. All their bike co-ops get started. in the state. No, how right. nice. They liked what we were doing. They heard about Fort us. Fort Smith is starting one. I just heard, I just talked to them in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. So the, the flow of bikes, some of them may go. May with, still be here in yeah. New Hampshire. Here in New Hampshire. But we need a place downtown. Yeah, yeah, because you all are now on we're, on we're Amherst just Street. Just off of Amherst Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, behind Chipotle. Yeah. Um, restaurant. Well, I'm glad you were able to find a place when. Oh yes. we, yeah. we were very oh, fortunate. We were, we yes. were out yeah. on the street. That's another one. Yeah, but you certainly yeah. miss that convenience of being downtown, and I, right. I'm certain that like yeah, the, it's not the clientele too. impossible to get to us, but it's difficult. Yeah, it's, it definitely so, we yeah. we experience that but, same yeah. thing. We'll, we'll come hat in hand because we have no money. <laughs> yeah, understood. Right. Well, gentlemen, it has been yeah. so yeah. great just chatting yeah. with you about what you do, and you do empower our clients and the community empowers you to keep doing what you are it doing does. in the great work. Right. So right. I thank just thank you so, so much for, <laughs> for being here being with here. me today. You. Oh, so you nice. are very welcome, gentlemen. <laughs> and thank you for watching the Empower Hour with Greater Nashville Mental Health. Hopefully you've learned something in this hour that empowers you, whether it is empower you to reach out to Gate City or whether it is um, to donate. And so thank you for joining us and take care. Have an empowered day.